iOS 17 Beta 1 is finally here and it's actually packed with features. So in this video, I will show you guys more than 30 new hidden features that you will be able to find on iOS 17. Now, before we get into all that, just want to ask you guys for a really quick favor. Most of you guys that watch my videos are currently not subscribed to the channel. So if you want to see more iOS 17 videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps out a lot. Now, when Apple introduced iOS 17, they didn't talk about a lot of features and some of the best of them that they mentioned, they mentioned them when they talked about iPad OS, like the motion wallpapers, which is a great feature. You tap here and you can see that motion that you get if you use one of your live photos as a wallpaper for your lock screen. Now, if you use one of your portrait photos for a lock screen wallpaper, this is really, really good. So you tap on customize here. And when you go to add these, you add them, you can see that blur on the background right there. So if you add a photo that's like not fitting properly, it will just extend it there and add that blur makes it look much, much better. And if you swipe like this, you can see how cool that is. You can actually add like remove the current background and add these backgrounds here with different colors and you will have like all kinds of different effects that you can add to your photos. You can see right here, we have even a dark and a light mode. So pretty cool. You can switch between these. You will see a bunch of different options. Choosing colors here, of course, choose the intensity of the color right there. You can actually create some amazing wallpapers using your own photos that you have taken with the portrait mode. Now for wallpapers that actually support the dark and the light mode, you can now choose how you want to use them. So tapping here on the three dots, you will have the appearance here and you can choose automatic. So the wallpaper will of course change between two different modes, whether you have the dark or the light mode enabled on your device, or you can choose to just use one of them all the time. You can now change right here the weight of the font on the clock. So you will have the slider right there that allows it to do that. Now, if you have a font here that you choose and you just change the weight here, you can always tap on that to actually get back to the default one, which is really, really cool. Another feature right here on the lock screen, you will have this button now to choose whether you want to use the depth effect or not, when of course you're using a wallpaper that actually supports this. Now, one thing I don't like about the lock screen on iOS 17 is that you can still not use the depth effect if you add any lock screen widgets. That would be actually pretty cool. It will look much, much nicer like this and having the widgets there, but Apple still hasn't added that feature. Moving on into the home screen and we have some really cool things here. So on the spotlight search, now you can toggle on or off the settings of your device. So if I search here for the always on display, I will get that toggle, which allows me to turn off the always on display directly from here or turn it on from here. Now it will show the top hit right there, but you still have other ones here. Like I can go ahead and turn on this focus mode. If I want to, I will have that button there. And you can see right now it shows the focus mode right there on the dynamic island, which actually is really, really nice. So a bunch of really cool features right here on the spotlight search. Another really cool thing here is that when you use one of those toggles, those will be saved right here under the recent. So you can always use them back again directly from here, which is really, really nice to have. So if you just want to have some toggles there, just simply search for some settings that you use usually or frequently, and you will have all of them right here on the list until you clear them. And if you search for your files, it will show you the files app right here, but then it will also show you your recent documents that you have used. So from here, I can go ahead and open the files app, or I can choose to open any of those files on the file app. Now we have some really great updates to the widgets on the home screen with iOS 17. Finally, we're getting interactive widgets on the home screen and I'm just waiting to see what devs will do, will do with this. It will actually be quite amazing. Now, first of all, here we have the contacts widget. Now what you can do with that, once you add it, it will be a simple widget, just like the one on iOS 16. But if you 3D touch here and tap on edit widget, then you can go ahead and just enable show buttons and you can choose to message and call. And of course the addresses where you want to message and call, and then you can do that directly from here. There's a new shortcut here also, for the short for the shortcuts app so a smaller one with two different shortcuts that you can add there and of course just launch any one of them from there and finally safari got 
also home screen widgets. You can see this one for the reading list. It actually only has this one only the reading list you can add of course all three different sizes and see your reading list right on your home screen and another thing that you can notice right here with the dark mode is that now the widgets on the home screen actually look much much darker moving on into the clock app and you can see this right here you can now actually have multiple timers on the clock app so you can see right there once you start one it will cre create right here another one automatically or you can just tap right there and create any one you want and you will have here different presets to quickly go ahead and start your timers so create multiple timers and of course enable them all at once now here's another really interesting new feature on the weather app you can see that animation that moon right there looks much much better now but if you go to check out the weather you can see the weather forecast here for the next days but it also can show you the forecast basically the weather of the previous day so that's really really cool if you just need that you want to take a look at that you can just go ahead and move one day backwards and iMessage got a ton of new updates some really cool ones Tap the plus button right here and you will get a new menu which helps you go to your camera, your photos or your location pretty easily. You can now share your location from here. Just tap that button and you will be able to request location from someone or send someone your location. You just tap there and you're good to go. You can see that little like button right there to request the location. Moving on into the seller settings, and this is a pretty cool new feature. When you go to your seller and you go to the apps to see how much data that you're spending, you will have here a new button to sort by name or sort by usage so you can see which apps are actually using more data. On the focus modes, if you go to one of them and you go to options right here, now you will have the ability to silence notifications. So you tap right there and you can choose while locked or always. There have been some changes to the photo editing tools as well. So when you tap on edit, you can see you have the revert button right there. And we also have some changes here. So if you go to crop or you go maybe to the markup tools to tap here, you can see a new interface here if you wanna add a shape. So you can see all kinds of different shapes here that you can add. So it's pretty cool, some really, really useful features. And right here, the buttons have actually also been redesigned at the top, which makes them look much, much better. And if you're on an album, you want to sort photos, you tap right there, sort or filter. Now, you, when you tap there, it's a drop down menu for both of them that will drop down like this and makes it much, much easier for you to select the sort or the filters that you want to apply. When trying to zoom in on a text, you will see we have this like loop here, which is much bigger and it has an outline, which makes it much, much easier for you to actually place the cursor anywhere you want on your text. And there are stickers on markup as well. So if you tap on the markup button anywhere on your device, and you tap the plus button, you can add a sticker now. So you tap there and it shows you all the stickers that you have. Of course, you can just drag them and add them anywhere you want. So this will work pretty much everywhere on messages, notes. Maybe you want to add them to a photo of yours. You can do that anywhere on iOS 17. Now, one thing you can do, you can also now drag emojis. So if I want to add an emoji there, I can just simply drag it right here and I can even resize it and add it there. So it's pretty cool, kind of though. All you have to do is just go to the emoji keyboard and just simply drag any emoji you want. On Safari, there's a new view here to switch between different groups of tabs that you have open, which in my opinion is much, much better than the old one. Now, what you can do on Safari is also now you can actually create different profiles. So when you tap here, you can see the profile here. You can go ahead and choose the profile you want to use. So when you go to the profile, you will basically have a new Safari here. So everything here is new. You can switch between different profiles and of course, each of these different profiles will have their own settings and will actually have their own tabs and tab groups. So it's really, really interesting what Apple has done here. So that we have all the groups and of course the profiles, we can just go ahead and just switch between them and you can create them from the settings of Safari. And you will also be able to share a group here. So if I go to one of my groups of tabs, I will have that share button right there at the top, which will let me share all the tabs on this group via iMessage. 
The Reminders app on iOS 17 also got the interactive widgets on the home screen, but it also got this grocery list right here. So whenever you're doing something like adding reminders to buy groceries, it will automatically put them there, which is very, very convenient and of course will make your life much, much easier. Another change here on the Shortcuts app, when you go to Automations, you will see now this has totally changed. It's much, much different than before. So all we have here is a button to start creating a new automation. And on the Fitness app, when you go to the home screen, basically to your summary, you can now get trainer tips right here. So watch this week's tips. So every week you will get new tips right on your summary page on the Fitness app. With iOS 17, now you have the ability to ping your Apple Watch. All you have to do is go to your settings to the control center and add the button, which allows it to actually ping your watch. And anytime you lose it or you don't find it somewhere, you can just go ahead and ping it and makes it much, much easier for you to find your Apple Watch. For any Apple dev, whenever they wanted to have access to their dev settings, they had to actually just connect their iPhone to the computer in order to do that. Now you will be able to actually have have that access straight on your iPhone without having to have the iPhone connected to your computer. This right here is pretty cool. Now we get dark mode for the pop-up of the AirPods. Previously, it would just show this on the light mode. It wouldn't matter whether your device is on light mode or dark mode. Finally, Apple has changed that. And now we have dark mode for the AirPods pop-up. So that is it for this video, guys. These are more than 30 new hidden features of iOS 17. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead, leave a like if you did. Of course, subscribe for more and I'll see you on the next one.